This video was inspired by two things. Firstly, my girlfriend, yes I have one, who recently watched an episode of Smackdown with me and has since become a fan of Cody Ra I mean wrestling. She knows nothing about it though, and so this was made with her in mind. But if you're not a new fan, I've also peppered it with a ton of sarcasm, so I hope you get something out of it. The other inspiration is that last month marked 25 years since the first time I saw wrestling and became a fan instantly. So yes, these are the ramblings of an old fan, aimed at a new one, sort of. The rules of a wrestling match. There are many, many different types of wrestling match with different rules. Some are more traditional, while others seem to come from the minds of absolute maniacs. Here are the standard rules of a wrestling match, on top of which everything else is based. The two main ways to win a standard pro wrestling match are pinfall or submission. A pinfall occurs when your opponent's shoulders are held down on the ring mat until the referee counts to three. Seemingly, it's also an unwritten rule that wrestlers aren't allowed to break a pin at a one count, as it only seems to happen every time the groundhog sees his shadow. Pinfalls can be broken by lifting a shoulder off the mat. A wrestler can also break the count by touching or reaching under the ring ropes, known as a rope break. This can be done with any body part, hand, foot or otherwise, but much like in sex, the tongue is usually more impressive. The other key way to win, submission, occurs when a wrestler, usually in a hold of some kind, either verbally gives up or repeatedly taps the mat as a sign of surrender, known for short as a tap out. It's most commonly thought that while tap outs existed in other sports, the ECW wrestler Taz innovated them in wrestling. His claim to this is that his finishing hold, the Katahajime, or the Taz mission, involves him wrapping his arm around the opponent's jaw, thus disabling a verbal submission so there had to be another way of a wrestler admitting defeat. Knowing Taz's reputation for not being the most pleasant man back in his wrestling days, it's equally likely that no wrestler wanted to give him the satisfaction that comes with a verbal submission, and so would rather tap. Another way to win a wrestling match is by countout. This occurs when a wrestler is outside the ring for longer than the referee's count of 10, and is declared the loser. When outside the ring, the referee's count can be broken, if a wrestler re-enters the ring and exits again. In most companies, the referee will count to 10, but in some promotions, particularly outside the US, the count can go up to 20. In Europe, this is so that the crowd can have a siesta part way through and not miss anything, because 20 counts feel like a f***ing long time. The final way a match can end is by disqualification. This typically follows some kind of rule breaking, there are many, many ways that a wrestler can be disqualified, most of which are fairly obvious, like low blows, joint manipulation, or fish hooking, none of which are as kinky as they sound by the way. If a defending champion gets disqualified, they usually don't lose their title. This is, in storyline, a way of ensuring that championships are won and lost fairly, but behind the scenes, this can be a way of letting a champion lose for whatever reason without taking the belt off them. A DQ can also happen if a wrestler uses a weapon, sometimes referred to as a foreign object, or as we're supposed to call them these days, international items, the damn woke brigade. Outside interference by anyone not officially part of the match will also cause the person on whose behalf they're interfering to be DQ'd. This is, as the title says, a beginner's guide, but if you're a long-term fan like me, I'd love to know what you think is relevant that I haven't talked about so please let me know in the comments.